I've got a bachelor's in fine arts in theater production and a master's in education. My freshman year, I was on a costume crew, which everybody has to do. You're there doing laundry, and, and you're a dresser for an actor in a production. And the actor I got assigned to was Cindy Meyer in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And um, my job at the end of every night was to, you know, do her laundry, but also sew. She had a corsage that she ripped off in a scene, so I was, like, sewing this corsage on. And so it's funny that I met Cindy, and then years went by, and then I saw Othello, and then years go by. And that's kind of the great thing about Tucson. I was born here. I um, have had the privilege of working with a lot of the same people throughout my career. I always used to brag that almost every job I've had has been in a theater. I started serving ice cream at Gaslight Theater in the you know red apron going around and then I went to um, college. I worked as a welder one summer in the scene shop. I worked with Arizona on stage here in town, then Flowing Wells and then The Rogue. So there's been a lot of faces that keep cropping up. Really been thankful to, to be a part of the Tucson community. When did you first know that you were or that you wanted to be an artist? Oh gosh, I was very young in Catholic grade school doing pageants of the Stations of the Cross. I think I played a Roman soldier once and just like the, the buzz, the, the fun of the production and getting to wrap up in a sheet and be, you know, a crowds person in one scene and then nailing a friend to the cross in another was just kind of fun. And then <laughs> that's really young. Then in high school, I really discovered theater. Got into our drama program. We had a really great full program and I just absolutely blossomed and expanded and wanted to do every single part of theater. I was in the advanced drama class being in every play and then I would stay after and build the sets with my teacher and just really knew that this was a place for me. How did you first hear about or encounter The Rogue? I, the first show I came to was Othello. Um, I was in college and heard about The Rogue and I came and just was absolutely blown away. Um, I love thinking about that, that I'm in the same room where I saw it, and I think the set was over there. I knew I wanted to be involved with The Rogue. I, I kept coming to shows. So my, my plan was always to go to college, learn everything I can about theater, become an actor, and then teach later, which, if you know my biography, I flipped that. Had some of my best experiences at the U of A. I absolutely loved just the sort of Hogwarts-esque nature of starting at an acting class and then going over to, you know, Deanna Fitzgerald's lighting class. And then I would be in a period styles costume class with Patrick Holt and then go straight from there, change back into my blacks and do stage combat with Brent Gibbs. You know, all my other friends in college were in these boring classes and, you know, were in these like real people job college classes. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go sword fight. And then after that, I'm going to learn how to sew. Thinking that as soon as I get enough time, I'm going to go start acting. My path in college gave me the opportunity to get a teaching certificate, and then that led straight into student teaching, and I found the high school where I taught, which was an absolute dream position. Um, so I ended up, like I say, just kind of flipping it. I taught for seven years um, in the theater program at Flowing Wells High School, which is weirdly very rogue-like in their own way. Um, it's a it's a great environment, lots of great people to work with, all about relationships um, and sort of building community. When you're a teacher, you get observed by your principal. So there was a particular conversation I had in a post observation where my principal said, you're here a lot. You're doing a lot of shows at the high school. Do you have personal life balance? Like, do you have something you like to go do? And that kind of flipped a switch in my head and I thought, I should go audition at The Rogue. Grapes of Wrath was probably a perfect first Rogue show. You know, everything about The Rogue is great literature, challenging ideas, but also really inventive staging. And I, I remember just whole rehearsals where we worked on pantomime and specificity because there was almost no props in the whole show and we were creating all these environments. I remember for the first time on stage feeling that, yes, I'm an actor, I'm going through what I'm supposed to do, all of the technical parts of acting. Yes, I have an emotional connection to what's happening in the story, but it felt 100% physical to be on that truck, which was made of tables on a turntable, you know, a stack of furniture, and feeling just the gentle sway and the bumps along the road. 
and then unloading the truck, picking up, you know, heavy boxes of who knows what pantomimed beans or something. <laughs> I feel like it was a great show to, to introduce me to performing at The Rogue. One role that I think I really grew into was the priest in Much Ado About Nothing. Had a really great monologue, sort of talking Hero's father down from his sort of crisis and saying, I've got a plan. I love being on stage when there's something that changes and decisions to be made. And it was a great opportunity for me to sort of take the center stage, sort of go through this beautiful speech that is sort of a turning point in the play. We're headed towards one particular train wreck and here I'm offering a new idea. The challenge with that was to not broadcast, here's what I'm doing as an actor, but to live in the the beat to beat moment of that monologue. What do you feel like you've learned from, from the other members of the ensemble? I've really enjoyed sort of the text work that Joe does, the um, supportive nature of working with other people who are working and struggling on big pieces of text at the same time, and just the opportunity to spend rehearsals working on the foundation of the play, which is the words on the page. That I think sometimes in other theaters or other um, theatrical experiences I've had, it feels more about, are we gonna be ready for three weeks from now? Is everything together? You know, Whereas here, we really dedicate time to the literature that brought us to the stage. You, of course, taught drama at Flowing Wells mm -hmm. for seven years and were honored with several Teacher of the Year awards from various arts and philanthropic organizations in that time. What was it like stepping away from teaching to, to join the Rogue full time? What was that transition like? Part of uh, where I was at that time was that I had sort of grown into having two dream jobs at the same time. Hmm. My parents, who were both teachers, um, said to me is that teaching will always be there. You know, if, if you have an opportunity, you should go for it. And so I've been at The Rogue full-time now for two years, and I wake up every day just excited to go to work and, and see what we do, and it's really been a good transition, but it was, it was definitely hard in the beginning to, to think about, you know, turning in my keys and this kingdom that I built. There's definitely been a lot of students who have taught me about myself or experiences in, in teaching that have taught me um, patience or grace, it's, it's something that will always be with me. I think you're always a teacher in that way. So actor, director, prop master, stage manager, build costumes with Cindy, you work with me and Joe on carpentry and set construction in the box office with the Shanai. What can't you do? Um, I don't like the word can't. <laughs> I, I think I've always approached things as somebody else does it. How hard could it be? I'll do a bad job and then get better. I often come up to a task and think, well, I've never done that before. You know, Beauty Queen of Lanon, we needed a wig that flopped open to show brain matter or something. Like, so, well, I've never done that before. I'll try it, and if it's bad, I'll get better the next time. Previous to working Costumes in the Rogue, knew how to use a sewing machine. And I could take two dresses, cut the sleeves off one, sew them onto the other, and it would look Elizabethan-ish and it'd be good, and I could hem, you know. Then I came to The Rogue where the quality of what the output is is so much higher. I had support from Cindy and Liz and, and, and the, the folks who work here to learn, and now I feel so much more confident I can, you know, take a pattern and, uh, and make a dress and then run to Cindy's office to ask her questions about, you know, a sleeve or something. And I, I kind of feel the same way about the work I've done here in Props, which is my main little island. I can pretty much figure out how to get something to look like what we want it to look like. Enough to where I feel confident in showing it to the other creators here and saying, this is what I think this should look like. And if they have a completely different idea, I know then I can either you know, scrap it and move on or, or refine it in some way. A well-made prop sort of blends in um, and sometimes it stands out. We've done some cool things. Great Expectations had, you know, props on display, the fun, you know, tombstones and dancing dresses and things. You're married to our resident music director, Russell Ronabaum. What, what, what is that like to, to be one of those rogue <laughs> couples on the staff? Um, Russell's great. 
best husband ever. Uh, it's <laughs> it's great to be able to work with so many awesome people at the Rogue, and then go home with one of them. And <laughs> something our audience might not know about you is that you're a widely published playwright. I was teaching high school. I had really high expectations for scripts, and I would read things and fall in love with them, but they had nine characters. I would and you look need a for lot something more than that for. In a class, I would have eight boys and 16 girls, maybe. So to try to find a play with eight boys and 16 girls, it's really difficult. And when I was teaching acting, we would go from uh, analyzing monologues and looking at subtext and tensions and tactics and you know how to do scene work. And then I just wasn't finding plays that I could then say, now do that here. So I wrote about 13 plays while at Flowing Wells. You know, various different genres. Some were adaptations, some were original stories. Three of those uh, have been published now. Those were kind of plays that, uh, that were for my advanced kids. They've got actual scene work that you can do with different things. And then they're, they're both um, sort of twisted farces. But uh, The Longest Day of April and You Can't Make Wine from Raisins were for my advanced classes. And then I also uh, recently got published a play that I wrote for my beginning drama class, which beginning drama is a completely different animal. It's kids who just need to be on stage once so that, you know, I have to send them out the door with a good experience because they'll never do theater again, or they'll audition to get into advance next. So I wrote a fairy tale story called The Story Seller's Tale. All three of those plays are published, and they've had some productions around the country this spring. Um, Story Seller's Tale is, I think next week it's in Missouri, um, Long Stay of April is in Michigan, and then um, You Can't Make Wine from Raisins is in New York, which I'm actually going to see, and I'm so excited, because it, it'll be the first time I've gone to see one of my plays um, elsewhere. What advice would you give yourself if you could go back? We're here for a short time, just do it. Just try it. And I, I feel like, you know, that's kind of the biggest takeaway that I've learned from my time as a human <laughs> yeah. is that, you know, worrying about what's going to happen if you try something is worse than just doing it and being okay at it. So just do it and get better next time.